The design of appropriate and effective exhibitions or tours is very important for many reasons. First of all, to guide the visitors through a journey into knowledge. As described by Hans Ulrich Obrist in his book Ways of Curating, the creation of a collection involves not only finding, acquiring, organizing and storing objects. In fact, it is definitely more. It is a way of thinking the world. The links and the connections which create a collection contain assumptions and associations. In other words, to create a collection is a method of producing knowledge. Let's start this lesson with some glimpses on the difference between a permanent collection and a temporary exhibition. The practice of making temporary exhibitions is quite modern, because before the 19th century it was rare to go to exhibitions. The first ones started in medieval times, when the artisans exposed their works on the occasion of the processions, when many people concentrated in the cities. Instead, sculptures and paintings were generally kept in places of worship. In his book, The Ephemeral Museum, Francis Haskell traces an overview of the history of art exhibitions in Europe. He identified as a milestone in the history of art exhibitions the year 1648, when the Académie Française launched the Salon. The Salon were places where the French artworks were exposed to be judged by the public. It was in the 17th and 18th centuries that art started to be considered heritage of the people, and the state museums were born, as already explained in the previous lessons. Some of the important steps traced by Haskell are the Impressionist exhibitions from 1874 onwards, the German industrial and secessions, and the post-impressionist exhibitions in London at the beginning of the 20th century. The enormous potentialities of temporary exhibitions began to be clearly acknowledged only in the 19th century in Great Britain. In fact, a temporary exhibition can collect cultural objects from museums and private collections all over the world, gathering together in small spaces artworks or archaeological objects originally intended to be seen in different places. Moreover, compared to permanent museum collections, Temporary exhibitions are characterized by more intense emotions and attention. As Theophile Thoré said in 1857, everything that was gathered yesterday, tomorrow will be dispersed. By collecting all the works of a given painter, including his preparatory studies and sketches, the exhibition can offer a detailed insight into the evolution of his technique and style. In other cases, a temporary exhibition can present to the audience almost unknown artists or testimonies of a historical period. An exhibition can also focus on specific topics, examined from different points of view and by means of diverse artworks or archaeological artifacts. Notwithstanding the fact that a temporary exhibition has a limited duration of time, there are the same specific rules to follow as for the setting of a permanent collection. They are both, in fact, media of paramount importance, which should turn to both a specialized audience and the wider public. To do so, good educational devices must be used, as well as additional contents and technological supports, which must be always characterized by a scientific background. Now let's see how to design an exhibition tour in the most effective way. The necessary premise is that the exhibition team should focus not only on the material objects, but also on the activities or practices in which the visitor can be actively engaged. The main steps to follow when planning and setting up an exhibition are well listed and explained by the already mentioned curatorial toolkit by Karen Love. The first step is to work on the idea at the base of the exhibition and choose the objects needed for the purpose. In case of contemporary art exhibitions, the choice of the artists is an essential task. Then, the curator writes the proposal and identifies the possible funding options for the exhibition. The next step involves the search for the right venue, considering the dimensions and the characteristics of the spaces and the available resources in terms of people and materials. After the venue confirmation, the administrative tasks start. A detailed plan for each phase of the setting up of the exhibition, with a precise division of roles and duties among the staff members, must be drafted. 
Indeed, the curator should work as a project manager, not doing all these procedures alone, but giving the tasks to selected people. However, the final result will be the curator's responsibility. For this reason, the curator should be a problem solver, very attentive to details and multitasking. The next phase includes the finishing of the project and the long procedures for the loans requests. A preliminary project budget is defined, considering all the possible expenses, including insurances, packaging, transportation, and so forth. Once loans negotiations are completed, all the events related to the exhibitions are planned. The curator should work with a graphic designer for promotional materials and should draft a marketing strategy. Then, the exhibition can be set. The opening reception and the related public events can start. There are some problems to face when setting up an exhibition. First of all, there could be difficulties related to the physical space. For example, how to put together small and large objects, how to manage the lights, which are essential for making the objects well visible, how to design vitrines, and so on. Two essential factors should be taken into consideration, the aesthetics and the functionality. The purpose is to provide objects and artworks with an appropriate and spectacular setting. For this reason, the active collaboration with engineers, architects and graphic designers is of utmost importance. The two-dimensionality is not always appreciated. In some occasions, it can be interesting to present the objects under different perspectives, for example, hanging from the ceiling or standing in vitrines with peculiar shapes. In this way, the visitor can feel more integrated with the environment and more engaged with the exhibition. The use of multimedia is very important as well. 3D creations, high-definition reproductions and videos can partly substitute or integrate panels. However, the spectacular value should not interfere with the functionality of the layout. The aim would be that of creating non-invasive strategies for preserving objects in the best possible way, paying attention to guarantee humidity, thermal control, light and so on. Technology and interactive infrastructures are essential in the museum setup, but should not be too visible and invasive. Technology and multimedia should be tools used in the proper way. The next part of this lesson will deepen an important challenge. The movement of objects when planning a temporary exhibition and the theoretical reflection concerning when an exhibition is really not worthy.